Welcome everyone to another one of my Blender tutorials and uh, what I'm going to demonstrate here today is how to make a pair of brass knuckles. Uh, anyway, we'll just go ahead and get started. Uh, I recently learned how to do a uh, my own startup file so I've already got a floor and I've got three lights here and so we'll just begin from here and I'll go to the uh, uh, wireframe mode and we'll go to uh, front ortho which is one and five on your uh, keyboard. <coughs> anyway, the technique I'm going to demonstrate here is uh, using Bezier curves, but I'm going to lock down uh, some of these things so we don't accidentally move my lamps or my empty or my camera. So we've got everything locked down there. <coughs> and I'm going to use Bezier curves to do this. It's real simple, real quick. So to start off with, uh, we're going to bring in a, uh, a background image, which I've uh, found on Google Images of a pair of brass knuckles. And I'm going to limit the view to our front. And we'll bring in an image. We'll go over here to my directory. And you click the uh, little icon up here and you can it'll uh, preview the images for you. <coughs> so anyway, uh, let me see if I can find this uh, pair of brass knuckles. Where is it? 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 Ah, oh, there it is. <clears throat> Find this on the Google image search. So now we've got our uh, background image here, and uh, we'll begin. I'm going to move things over here a little bit. And Shift A to add a uh, Bezier circle. And we're going to drag it right over here. Rotate X 90 degrees. And now that we've got that, we're going to duplicate this five more times to make six of them. So Shift D and click on your um, left mouse button and drag it down. That's two. Click and drag it down. That's three. And Shift D again. Click, drag it down. <coughs> Shift D again. And uh, right there. So we got five. We need one more. And hold the Z to constrain it. So we've got, uh, got six Bezier circles here. Now, if you go over here to your uh, curve tab or your uh, where you can see more information, these are currently three. We're going to leave them like that for now. And I'll show you what to do to finalize the uh, image. <coughs> so we're going to drag our first one over, put it right there in the middle somewhere, about like so, and uh, scale it up a little bit. Now like so. Then we go into edit mode. And we'll drag our points over. We're going to just kind of start off with the the bare uh, <coughs> bare proportions for right now. What I do is I subdivide along as I go, but I try to keep an eye on what I subdivide because you get a lot of subdivisions here and it gets uh, tedious manipulating it. So I've just kind of got the bare uh, outline here for and so what we do is go ahead A, select all points, and you go ahead and subdivide to add some additional points. So we're trying to keep it down to the bare minimum we need. <coughs> I'm just going to pull these down here to the uh, indentations here. It's not quite what we want it yet, but we'll subdivide maybe twice more to get where we're going. And you can... Uh, Tweak it a little bit. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and subdivide again because I need some more points here. Right, this is where we're at right now. So we'll subdivide again. Now we've got a few more points to work with. We can start outlining the basic shape here. And it uh, looks like we're pretty close on the curves there. So maybe we can uh, go without another. <coughs> we may have to do one more round of subdivision now. We'll see. <coughs> We're just going to pull these things out into their uh, kind of the nominal positions that we think we'll need here. Yeah, over here. Pull this one down. <coughs> and a little slippery there. And we need the uh, corners here where the uh, 
and where the brass knuckles go behind. Now see we may have to subdivide because we're not getting enough resolution there. So we'll hit A again, A twice, <coughs> and we'll subdivide again. Now we're getting a little closer to where we want to be. We can start defining some of these curves here on the inside. So like I say, it doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, you know, you try to pull it in as close as you can here. I'm just clicking and uh, on and off here and adjusting these handles a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to explain the uh, how the handles work exactly because we're just going to cut right to the chase and get your pair of brass knuckles made. So, so now we've got a good little outline here. Now this inner portion here, it kind of looks like a smiley face. We're going to do that one next. We'll tab out. We'll get <coughs> another circle here. <coughs> Drag it into place here. And then edit it. <coughs> of course, like I say, you just kind of go with the basic shape and do subdivisions and refine it until you get what you want here. Uh, let's see, we'll pull this one in position here. So we're going to hit A twice again, do another subdivision. Get a few more points to work with. Like so. Let's see what this looks like. That's pretty close there, okay. So we're on our way to having a pair. Now what I want to do here initially is I'm going to go ahead and shift click both of these. And control J to join them. And now we're going to get our other circles in here. And <coughs> right down here. Get another circle over here. Yeah, as you as you know, you can go in and edit these circles and make them a little regular if you want. But just to, for the sake of speed and give you the principal idea here, we're gonna we're gonna fast forward you to. Uh, Getting these things, getting your model made. And I'll explain what needs to be done regarding the Bezier circles. So we're going to see what we got here. Now, these other four circles here, we're going to go ahead and include them in this, this uh, joint here. We can uh, adjust position just a little bit. That looks okay. So we'll just Shift click. Dun, dun. I'm going to resize this one a little bit. Like so. Alright, now we go back. Shift click. <coughs> so, now we hit Control J again. So, now this is one uh, complete Bezier curve. And the important thing here is, I want to show you is, these are still in the 3D mode. So if you were to, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. And uh, we'll change the view here temporarily. Oop. Okay. Uh, we've, got, we've got to make the rotation stick there. And bring our cursor to here. Go to the origin here and bring the origin to the 3D cursor. You know, Rx, 90 degrees, now it's uh, laying flat. So if we're over in our camera view, we just got this thing laying flat. Now if you leave this a 3D curve, you can go ahead and do your... Uh, uh, well, actually you can't do an extrusion. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to convert it to a 2D. Now, we we'll just do our uh, extrusion here. And uh, we'll look at that in solid view. So you see we've got this, uh, looks like it's rotation is a little bit off here. Let's see, we get it that straightened out. Okay, so this needs to be 180. Now, there we go. So we've got it extruded and you can uh, make it a little thinner if you like. Hold down the ship and uh, you can drag it back. So, uh, let's see what I want to see. The offset the depth. The depth will give you a bevel on the edges, but you want that edge to be smooth. So what you do is you crank up the resolution on the curve. So now we've got this, uh, it's still in the curve mode. 
So if we jump out of a camera, we can still uh, tweak our curves on this. But we, uh, it's only in the X and Y, it can't be pulled in the Z. <coughs> I mean, the curves can't be, the curve handles can't be pulled in the Z. And uh, so it's what's funny, if you do this in 3D, say, you get a hollow shape, which is not what we want. But you can twist this thing around the Z-axis now, but you don't want that. So we're going to go back to our 2D. And we'll uh, go back out of the tab mode. So we've got our bass knuckles here. And uh, we'll just uh, go real quick over here to the camera view. <coughs> I'll show you how to set up a uh, rough uh, brass material. Uh, and we'll go into the nodes editor. And uh, one cycle render. Okay. So we'll, uh, we've got a diffuse here. Well, we're going to take this out. And we're going to add a mixer. Mix shader. And uh, we'll just go ahead and plug this in. Even though we don't have any materials yet. <coughs> we'll add a um, glossy. And we can add a uh, anisotropic if you like. Going for the metal look. And uh, we'll do this one, and do this one. And when we get kind of a yellow brassy color, we we'll kind of dial it down, kind of a reddish yellow. And then you can go here and copy this color. <coughs> so we'll see what we got here. We'll go to the render view. So we got a fairly convincing uh, brass. Maybe it'll be maybe a little too red there. Uh, <coughs> but anyway, that's basically how you do it. Now, uh, this still is a in a curve mode, so you can, uh, once, I'll, I'll just show you what happens, uh, how to convert this to a regular mesh. We'll go back into the solid here, and we'll go over to camera view. We'll pull in a little bit. We'll move this window over just a tad, the uh, nodes editor. And you can just go Alt-C, yep, Alt-C, mesh from uh, curve, meta and surface and tech. So you do that now, the problem is, <coughs> we've got a lot of triangles with this, but the uh, converting from a mesh, from a curve to a mesh, keeps things pretty smooth. The only problem is that if you wanted to go ahead and uh, UV this, it's a fairly complex shape at this stage. And, you know, I hadn't even done a su uh, surface subdivision. Uh, so at this stage, you might be able to go in and uh, mark some seams off for a texture mapping but at this point you know <coughs> uh, for this type of model with the triangles and stuff I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend uh, doing any further surface subdivisions because the curves pretty much cover uh, the conversion to give you a smooth mesh so just keep that in mind now uh, but uh, this looks pretty good and in the render here We've got a pretty nice looking uh, pair of brass knuckles there. And of course you can go into your uh, curves mode. Let's see here. And do some additional, well now it's a mesh now. Anyway, you can, uh, we can control Z and step back here. Let's, uh, let's step back. And so now we're back in the curve mode. What you can do when you do your conversion, you can hit Alt C. And then you have this option down here to keep original. If you want to continue working in the curve mode, you can do that. So now what you do, you'll have a copy. Uh, we're going to wireframe here real quick. I think the copy is... That's the one in the curves mode. This will be your mesh copy. So you can always go back and um, uh, work on your curves mode and then convert back. And you got the option to keep the original. So anyway, I, th I thought this would be a neat.